Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsdorf Arcade at bergsdorfarcade.com and here we are again with another tutorial on NGUIX. I'm going to go ahead and open up, make sure everything's opened up for me. And I'm going to go back in and, well, actually, we're at this script, so let's take a look. The last thing we have left to do that I wanted to get done uh, with my floating text was have it float upward for X seconds, then destroy. So there's a few things I actually want to play around with before we do that. And, uh, well, one of them is what well, was bugging me at the last uh, video. I want to cache my transform and you can call it whatever you want but for me I've always called it underscore T and anytime I'm in one of my scripts and I see that underscore T I just know it's transform so I'm gonna go ahead and make my underscore T equal to uh, my transform and it's pretty important to actually cache that transform for when you're doing a lot of uh, updates and you have your transform in there you don't want to keep looking that up and I was using it somewhere else right here I believe that's all of them let's go ahead and we'll take a look here uh, yep okay so that was the first thing I wanted to get adjusted uh, the next thing I want to change um, so it was a font size to just size now I believe this will actually go through my other scripts and change that as well uh, generally when it goes to other, other scripts to change, it takes a fair, fair amount longer to do. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, we'll look in here. And because I had commented, I think it didn't work. But anyway, uh, that was another thing I wanted to fix. And we're going to come back in here. And I think those were the two main things. I guess I should have written them down. But anyway, I want to start playing around with some of the tweening that comes with uh, NGUIX. So I'm just actually going to start off with, uh, where would my button go? It's still there. Just wasn't seeing it. Anyway, I want to actually start off with uh, some of the tweening. So I'm going to actually select my cube because I want my cube to be able to move from side to side uh, for this next example. And I don't want to do it myself. So what I'm going to do is... Well, let's put it back to where it was. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter where it was. Because I'm going to select it, come up to Component, go down to NGUIX, and go down to Tweening. And you notice that there's actually some here already. Now, between Position and Transform, I do not see a difference between them, but I'm just going to use Position. And I'm going to go ahead and actually add it to, well, I added it to the camera. I did not mean to add it to the camera. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove it from the camera. Uh, remove Component. And make sure we have the cube selected this time. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll add this on there. And I'm doing position. And let's take a look at some of these uh, events that we're going to be looking at. Well, the first one we're going to look at is from and to. And that's just basically where you want it to go from what position to the other position. So I'm actually going to start off. Let me see. We're starting off on the X here. So I'm going to go whoops, down here. I'm actually just going to paste that in and put a 1 in front of it. And we'll move it two to the other side, so that means we'll be going to the positive. I guess that's four. And I don't want it to move on the Y or Z. Uh, so basically, this is just going to have it move across the screen. Now, this is included as a script, so if you really wanted to, you could just double click it, open it up, and take a look at everything that's in there. Um, let's see, so we've got that, and if we go ahead and start this up, it's just going to jump over here and move to the side. Not exactly what I want. Uh, we have a few different things here we can play with. I've got these two done. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is this method. We can do uh, ease in, ease out, ease in and out, or linear, and style type. Uh, we can have a loop, we can have a ping pong. Uh, this is a quick demonstration. Looping, but well, it's just going to loop. And ping pong, it'll just go back and forth. And I think this is the one I want for this example. So if we go ahead and take a look at it here, it's just going to go back and forth. That's fine. Uh, I'm actually going to change this to ease in out. So it gives it a bit of a, a curve sign. Well, as you can see, it slows down at the ends. All right. And we can also change the duration. I'm actually going to make it a little bit longer. Well, I guess twice as long. I'm going to go with two seconds here. Uh, just to make it a little bit slower. Uh, I think that's a little too slow. I'm going to go with 1.5. 
And one more. Great. And of course, you know, the driver still works. If we click on it, we see that it pops up over top and it keeps moving along with it. We'll go ahead, we'll stop that. And the next thing I want to do is actually have the text start floating upwards on it. Now, there's going to be a little bit more change than we'll have to do in our script before we can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and close this because I won't be playing with that. Uh, one of the things is uh, we have this field here called active. It's not really what I want now. When we first created that variable, sure, active worked great, but uh, if we look at it down here, what we really should have called it was uh, follow because that's really what it, it does. It takes a look to see if uh, we want to be able to follow our uh, target around, and if so, then we you know reposition ourselves every frame. So I'm going to go ahead and re rename that. And I'm actually going to call it follow target. And we'll go ahead, we'll let that save, and then I'm also going to go down here and actually change the method as well. Follow target. And <laughs> I meant to refactor it, just so it gets changed everywhere. There we go. We'll let that one save off. And let's go see if it actually did change over here. I'll save here. And if we come over here and take a look, uh, we'll notice it actually did change it for us. Uh, so just an FYI, if you haven't commented out, it won't save. But OK. I'm going to go ahead and save that script as well. And just a quick test to make sure everything's working. It should be working fine. And sure enough, it's following. Great. Uh, I'm going to break this off into its own method. So I guess we'll just do it right underneath the spawn app. And I'm trying to think, do I really need it to be public? I don't think I'm going to be calling it anywhere. I'm not going to be returning anything. So I'm actually just going to make it private. And following is what I'll call it. It's not going to take any variables. And I'm just doing this to clean up the uh, the late update. Of course, we want this. This way here, if we have to put more stuff down here, it's just one line of code. And I'm just actually going to, oh, no, let's keep good, uh, whoops, syntax. And we'll go ahead and move it over. Now we see how easy it is to actually get things to move around on the screen. And for this example, I wanted to actually have my text float upwards. Uh, but there's going to be times when maybe I want to have my text fade or rotate or something else. And I don't really want to go through the hassle of adding all these tweening components uh, to it. Uh, because a lot of the times I'm just not going to need them. I don't know if I don't need the fade, I don't want the fade. Uh, so basically what I want to do is add them basic, as I need them. And if I don't need them, well, don't add them. So I'm going to create some methods that will actually add these components as I need them and set them up. So what I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to go right above the init. And it will be public. And I'm going to want to get a reference, well, add the component to it and then send back a reference of it. So... I guess we'll call this one uh, tween position since that's actually what it's called. So we're going to pass back a tween uh, position. And I can't call it tween position. Well, actually, I could. And I guess I could actually pass one in as well. So I could set the tween position itself up and then uh, pass it in. In which case, I'll make a getter and setter for it. Uh, there's going to be a bit of code here, because I don't want to check to see if I have one on me already. And if not, then go ahead and add that and then pass it back. Uh, let me see. Then we're going to also want the set. And likewise, if I already have one, I want to make sure to check it. I uh, will check to see if I have one. If I do, just go ahead and copy the variables over. We'll remove the old one, put the new one on. Uh, there's going to be a few things we'll want to do here. So let's go ahead and jump right in with the getter.
So the first thing I want to do is actually set up a variable. So between position, I'm just going to call it TP. And we're going to say is equal to get component. And the component we want is tween position. And then we're actually going to check to see if this, if we actually got something. So if there's a tween position already attached, that's what we're going to get. If not, well, we want to be able to detect that. So if TP is equal to null. So if we did not get anything, that means, you know, there was nothing there. We're going to go ahead and add that. So we're going to say game object, which is just a reference to whatever this script is attached. And then we're just going to do add component. And then we'll use generics and we'll just do tween position. Now this should go ahead and actually add the component for us. And then down here, we're just going to return TP. There we go. Uh, let's just go ahead. We'll head into Unity. Just make sure there's no errors. Yep, no typos. And I'm going to head back into my script. I'm going to go to the driver. And let me see, right after the following. So I'm going to come down here. And just to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the duration to, I don't know, let's say 10 seconds. So we'll go ft dot tween position dot duration is equal to uh, 10 seconds. And I'll go ahead and save that off. Uh, no errors. We'll start it up. And when we hit driver here, we notice this pops up and we're getting a null reference. Uh, let me go ahead. We'll just take a look at this. Okay, so we are getting an error. Let's go ahead and we'll see what the error is. And it looks like we're not actually passing back the tween. Uh, let's see where, and sure enough, I forgot to actually assign uh, this add component to the TP variable. So we'll just say TP equals uh, what we're adding, and then we'll return it. So let's go back into Unity. Uh, we'll go ahead, we'll just start it up. That error is going to clear. And now when we hit driver, it's added. And if we come down and take a look, sure enough, the duration is 10 seconds. Uh, so we can actually do quite a few things with it just the way it is right now. If we came back in, uh, we could actually come down and say ft dot uh, tween position dot uh, from. And let's just set it to vector dot to zero, which is actually what it starts at. But we could also come down and say ft dot uh, tween position dot two, where we want it to go to equal to and I'm just going to say vector three dot up and I'm actually going to times that uh, let's do by a hundred and if we go ahead and start this off uh, we do have another error here uh, I forgot my vector three and if we start this up and go ahead and hit the driver uh, we see it slowly moving up now, I want to point out right away that this is not the best way to do it because every time we call this, we're actually telling uh, the getter over here to go ahead and try to get that component each time. So the first time it's going to look and go, oh, look, I don't have this component attached. So I'm actually going to go through and create it and then return it. Then on the next call, it comes through and it tries to get it and it looks and it goes, okay, you know, I do have something. So it just returns what it already has. And then every subsequent call is the exact same thing. And that's kind of slow. So what we really want to do is actually just store what we're going to get back here. So let's say ft, well here, tween position tp is equal to ft dot tween position. And I'm going to go ahead and comment these out. We'll be using them in just a second. And if we go ahead and start this up, and hit this you know we're actually going ahead and getting it i guess we should have actually done something just to show uh, but by default it has a duration of one uh let's go in and we'll adjust the duration one except this time we're going to go f p i'm sorry that's actually tp and we no longer need the tween position because this actually is a team position script itself so we can actually jump straight to the duration and this time we'll do something a little different. We'll do it 20 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete the rest of this line. And if we go ahead and save it off, 
and we start it up. We'll go ahead, hit the driver, come over here and take a look. And sure enough, there it is. It's already set. So we can access it this way. And then, of course, uh, we can do the rest of the stuff by going uh, TP dot uh, from. Well, here, this is probably quicker just to uncomment these. Switch them over to TP. Uh, we'll just do from dot from. And then TP dot to. Of course, uncomment. And of course, we go and take a look. Uh, of course, we got to hit the driver button first. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we see it's got a, a from, a to, the 20 seconds. And it doesn't require it to constantly keep going and looking it up. We'll just cache it over here. And now that I've done it this way, uh, we don't really need a setter. I think I'd rather just actually cache it here, change my values. So I'm actually going to come over here and just get rid of the setter. So uh, set right here. Now we're well over the 10 minutes that I actually like to keep these at. So I'm going to go ahead and make a part two for this one. And just a quick look at what we have so far. So I hope I only hit it once, I guess. But uh, So we have something moving around in the scene. And when we hit driver, it's spawning. It's moving up. But then at the end, I want it to be destroyed. I don't want it coming back to follow. And if we hit more like to add more we'll notice that they're uh not going in the right spot and uh, if we take a look here well, well we'll go through this in the next tutorial anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in part two bye bye